Let your body relax onto the floor. Beginning with some pumping of our lungs, just deep, deep inhales. Relaxing, peaceful exhales. Imagining with our inhales, we're breathing in our hopes and our dreams in this future we envision for ourselves. With our exhale, letting go of all of our fears and anxiety. Anything that we see is preventing us from that best possible future. Breathe it out. Taking a few breaths like that. Inhale, peace and love. Exhale, letting go. In our class today, we're focused on the ideas of grounding to help support us in a release from anxiety. So by grounding down into the earth, by grounding into this comforting, nurturing quality, we allow ourselves to become overwhelmed and washed with peace and love and hope so that we can release some of the things that have been keeping us anxious and fearful. It's like we're trusting that by us feeling better within, things will begin to look better outside of us as well. So today, the way that we're embodying this is any pose we're in, I'll try to do as many reminders as possible today to feel every part of your surface area that's touching the ground. Really tune into it, feel it, be one with it. So that in that way, we're constantly realizing what is in that connection with the earth. What is grounded, what is solid, what is nurtured. So with that idea to bring us on, let's take one more breath to just feel already all the surface area that's on the ground. Exhale to release. And next inhale to bring the knees into the chest. As they come inward, you're welcome to rock around a little bit. This can help to loosen some tension in the low back and the hips. And even with movement, be aware of that kind of fluid quality of touching the earth. One part, and then it shifts and it moves to a whole different area. Beautiful. So from here, clasping hands around the right knee, Left foot drops down and extends long to the ground. And before we completely release the muscular effort from that left side, three times let the left knee go wide as you slide the heel back in, keeping contact with the earth. And then when it's, in, it's as far as in as possible, slide the leg right back out. Two, slide it back in and out. And one. Good. Out. Release all muscular effort on left. Continue to invite this right knee in deeper. This right knee starts to melt open to the right side. It won't be able to touch the ground, but imagine that it's continuing to melt open until it's so wide that you envision it could or maybe kind of the pinky toe can touch the floor. And then invite this knee back in. Open the right arm to the right and continue to twist this right knee to the left. Maybe some part of that right foot can touch the ground in that direction, just the big toe. Or sometimes people can get all the way to the knee, but don't feel like you're forcing anything. This is still early in class. And do definitely feel this right shoulder still very much in contact with the earth, as much surface area as possible.
Good. Hip back to the ground. This right foot goes to the ground. Push. So this is still a bent knee at first. So right knee is up to the sky. Push the right foot into the ground. This will start to lift the hips off the ground. Left foot rises, pointing like a lightning bolt up to the sky. So that lift like a half bridge pose. Two more breaths. And feel how this lift is only possible because the ground is there. Last inhale. Exhale, start to roll. Return back down. Place left ankle onto right thigh and give it a hug. More inhale. Exhale, we start to release the right leg. It travels long onto the ground. We begin to hug around the left knee. So again, before we completely relax that right leg, bend the right knee wide, slide the heel in, and return it back out long. Two more. Last one. Good. Now release right leg. Pull left knee in tighter. Left hand starts to slide this knee wide. Knee slides back up, grip on, continue to twist, relaxing open to the other side. Remember this left shoulder, it's in contact with the earth. Keep that contact pressing down. Nice inhale. Exhale, begin to return the hip back down. Once the hip is on the ground, left foot goes to the earth. We press into it to create the lift, like the bridge pose, including floating right leg up. Keep the breath flowing. Last inhale. Exhale, hips down, right ankle to left thigh. Give it a hug. Nice inhale, exhale, release. And as we roll like the ball a couple of times, feel any surface area at any point that's on the ground, trying to really be conscious of that. Rocking up into the very low part of the back and hips, and then rolling, feel it shift. Maybe two more, if it feels good on our spine. Beautiful. When we're back up, come to collar, lift the spine straight, and continue to melt forward, ultimately having the goal today to release as much to gravity as possible, letting gravity take over. That's that grounding quality, absolutely.
The closer we can get downward, the more our anxieties and fears just release. No longer present, no longer washing over us. Gravity knows how to take them from us. It knows how to handle it, releasing it to the universe, knowing that good stuff will happen. It's all going to be okay in the end. One more breath, go all the way deep into the belly. And exhale, let it go. Rolling up nice and gentle. Pick up the left knee and flip it over to the right knee. Once we're there, continue to walk the hands, spiraling them behind you. Feeling a nice twist in the spine. So twist our front door. Just kind of let the knees flow over. Yep. And once again, feel anything that's touching the ground. Fingertips or palms, your hip, your thigh, whatever's in contact with the earth, be with it. Receive it. Imagine that part of the body is getting comforted, getting washed over with release. Release love, healing, vitality. Start to walk the hands forward and this left ankle, grab onto it and continue to slide it off to the side. So now we've got right leg in front of us normal, left foot is tucked back. We start to head our way backwards. So hands are on the floor, maybe the left elbow or the right elbow, maybe both, maybe all the way up to the back, but don't feel any pressure. And whatever you end up with touching the ground, again, let yourself give that area of the body, give the energy of that area over to the earth. Are we supposed to keep our left knee on the floor? Yes, try to keep left knee on the floor. Yeah, that's how we include the quad the very best. Think of this like electricity. If you don't have a, one part of it grounded to the earth, crazy static stuff will start to happen. Your appliances will randomly burn out. But in grounding, the electricity flows the very best possible. So take one more inhale, exhale, release grounding. And then we reverse our way back up. Every step we took to get into this, reverse it to rise. Good, we'll start to tilt forward. It's easiest to go over the angle of that right knee. So maybe start there. If you want to go deeper, you'll continue to walk your way back to face toward the, the top of your mat. Again, any surface area that's on the floor, just release. Sometimes I can make my forehead even touch down. So if you can, that's a great energetic release. That third eye, releasing it down. You tend to have anxiety go up to the upper chakras. So getting those upper chakras to touch the earth can be so healing, so grounding. Beautiful. Rising back up. Release this left leg back into cobbler. Return forward for a moment. Good. Rising up, we'll take it to second side, so pick up the right knee and just flip it over to the left. Walk the hands behind you to spiral the spine. Mm -hmm. 
Deep belly breath in. Exhale, return the hands. Grab onto that right ankle and slide this right knee wide. So it was stacked and we just slid it to be that kind of backwards facing shape. Good. Start to head some of your surface area backwards. Maybe just hands, maybe elbow. Maybe more of your spine. Again, yeah, same thing. Try to keep the knee down. That'll help us to get into that quad. And if you're not in the quad, just do a little tiny scoop with the tailbone under, and that helps you significantly get to that spot. Three more breaths, trying to let them go nice and slow, using that to help ground you and heal you. Only when you finish that third breath, reverse every step to get back up. And then we slide forward, tilting over that left knee direction, or maybe forward. Again, if the forehead can touch down, let it release. Starting to rise back up. Return that right knee upward, plant both feet, and then give it a nice hug around the shins. Once you've got that hug established, push the shoulder blades backwards, trying to stretch that part of the spine. Notice how at this point, very little surface area is touching the floor, but yet in this release of the, the heart area, there's almost like this natural ability that we have to just drop some of our energy down into the earth. Anything that might be holding us tight in this area. We start to straighten the spine up. Imagine you're like this energetic ball that's so ready to just release some of that static. So then in one smooth, big motion, extend the legs out, find the floor with your hands, and just let yourself continue to walk forward as far as feels good. Maybe the entire palm is touching the earth, releasing some of that static energy. It's like with any breath in, we then let our exhale release that energy, energy out the hands. One more deep inhale. Exhale, and then return back in, simple cross-leg position while we take a few rounds of alternate nostril breathing. We take our right hand. I usually like to tuck my pointer finger and the middle finger down, and then I, I close off the right nostril by plugging the thumb, and then I close off the left nostril when I use that ring finger, so just alternating back and forth. So start off just without holding it all. Take a normal inhale, normal exhale. Plug off left, inhale right. 
Plug off right, exhale left. Inhale left. Exhale right. Inhale right. Exhale left. Inhale left. Exhale right. Inhale right. Exhale left. Two more. Inhale left. Exhale right. Inhale right. Exhale left. One more round. Inhale left. Exhale right. Inhale right. Exhale left. Dropping the hand down when you finish. Return back to normal breath. Just two or three rounds, tuning into how our body feels that energetic quality. And heading forward onto hands and knees. We'll take a puppy pose. So leave the hips over the knees, walk the arms forward. We're trying to get the shoulders to stretch forward. So this might mean the forehead is on the ground. This might mean the chin is on the ground. Either way, the heart is trying to drop down. Starting to slide the hips back. Make sure the knees are extra wide in child pose. Arms are stretching forward. And then take the right arm and spread it under the left armpit to a nice shoulder opener or twist depending on how you shift your spine. Unwind the right side, spread the left under. Good. Unwind that left arm. From here, it's like the most exaggerated cat cow we've ever done. We're going to alternate back and forth between camel pose and rabbit pose. So our spine gets that chance to completely go to both directions. So starting off with camel, we come up to a high spot, our hands behind the hips, pushing the hips forward, and then one or both hands drop down. So you can always tuck the toes to make it a little easier. Good, feel that huge arch. Then eventually, these will be at your own pace, but eventually bring the hands to the low back. Sit the hips back like child pose, untuck the toes. Grab your heels, set the forehead down, and then from that shape, lift the hips up. So this is the rounded part, like the cat. Good, so those will be the two shapes we go in back and forth between a few times. This will be at your own pace. So at some point, head back up to camel, take all those steps, gradually coming back to the arch. This is the cow. Or camel. <laughs> and then we're heading to the cat eventually, AKA rabbit. Uh, 
Good. Maybe two more like that. Nice and slow. own timing for the last one. Dropping to child pose for two or three breaths. Just let that spine have a break. Notice how relaxed the body is at this point. We've got a lot of surface area that's grounded down into the earth. So now as we do a couple of push-up pulses, we're going to try to remain with the same quality of deep, slow breathing, slow movement, and also this connection of hands and toes or even knees to the floor. So begin to head to your plank or kneeling plank. And just five times the best strength that you have. You bend the elbows and then just slowly press. So how your body's not anxious at all, we're, we can do this. Four. Three, I can meet my challenges. Two, one, lower chaturanga. Feel all that surface area touch the ground. Take a full breath cycle, just in and out with that belly on the earth. And then choose your back bend, sphinx or cobra. Eventually to downward facing dog. Float the right leg up to the sky like a lightning bolt till it reaches as high as physically possible. Stepping that right foot in between our hands, drop the back knee down. We're bringing our hands up to that front thigh as we sink the hips forward. And maybe we continue to arch the spine backwards. Good. Straighten the front leg, drop the hands down. Half splits. One more deep grounding breath in. With our exhale, the front foot finds the ground again. Lift up the back knee. And we're going to launch our way forward into standing split. So your fingers travel forward, the back leg floats. And continue to let that back leg lift as much as you have the strength for. Maybe one of your hands comes behind the ankle or cap. Maybe both hands. Feel how only that one foot is on the ground, but yet if we solidly place it there, we can ground. Good, so if you lifted fingers, find the fingers on the ground again. 
It's like a little squat. That floating left knee touches the right knee. The right knee bends a little bit. And then straighten it right back up to that height. Lightning bolt. Two more like that. Touch. And reach. Touch. And reach. Good. Then C. It's a little challenge. But bringing that left knee to the nose. See if you can then rise all the way up to stand. Balancing on that one foot. Left knee floating in front. Good. Maybe taking a twist, right hand to that knee, left hand opening up behind. Good work. Return, step this left foot behind into pyramid shape, two straight legs, and then slide down the thigh, or the shin, or maybe to the floor. Very little surface area on the ground, but so much groundedness. We're solid in what we do have. So from here, heading closer to the splits, you'll start to hop that back foot backward or kind of wiggle it backward as far as you want to go. You can always drop the back knee if you like. Good, and then bring this right leg behind you. From kneeling, maybe shake it out just a little bit, making sure that hamstring feels really good. Beautiful, taking a flow. If you'd like to add those five pulses, you're welcome to. You don't have to add them. Good. And whether you're up to the down dog or not, take a moment to come forward, lowering belly onto the earth. Even taking alligator, stacking the hands. Let the forehead rest for a moment. Feel yourself breathe into the earth, releasing all your worries, all your cares. Notice how the right side feels so different from the left side. Reestablish this calm, grounding breath. If you feel ready, take Cobra or Sphinx. Just one good inhale this time. And exhale to downward facing dog. Left leg floats to the sky like a lightning bolt. Step that left foot forward and through, dropping the back knee down. Hips sink forward. We walk the hands up to the thigh. Allow that weight to release. Maybe even continuing to lift and arch the heart. One nice inhale. Exhale, the front leg goes straight. Drop the hands toward the floor. Just release downward.
beautiful inhale. Exhale, the front foot plants. We lift up the back knee and we prepare to launch our weight forward, floating right. Maybe one hand comes behind the ankle. Maybe the other. Then hands on the floor, those three little squats. Touch the back knee to this left. And return back up as high as you were, if possible. Going two. And one. Good. And then to rise up to stand, feel this left foot in the earth. Feel it pressing down. Start to curl that right knee in, rounding the spine up until we're up, floating right knee. Still feel that left on the ground. Taking a twist, left hand to the right knee, right arm behind. Good, return. Step this foot back into pyramid. Keep the hips facing forward. Two straight legs, start to slide down toward the thigh, the calf, the floor. When you're ready, heading toward the splits, scooping the back leg back or the front leg forward, maybe dropping the back knee on the ground. Just feel that really good reach. When you're ready to come back, maybe take a moment to shake that left leg, helping that hamstring feel nice and loose. Beautiful. Same thing as before, kneeling plank or full plank. Maybe five pulses or just go through a little flow up straight up to down dog if you prefer. And then eventually we can lower down whatever shape you chose. Belly touching the earth. Stacked palms, forehead can rest into alligator. Fill all this grounding, all the surface area with the earth. Eventually, Sphinx or Cobra. And down dog. You're ready. You can begin to step walk or jump all the way forward. Take a nice inhale. Exhale, inhale, rise. Hands to heart. And stepping wide on your mat, face either way. So face inward. And first we're going to just hold in a squat, a goddess pose. 
So make sure that the knees are trying to rotate out toward the pinky toe instead of kind of collapsing in. And then we're making sure knees don't go past the toes. If you're too narrow, go a little bit wider. Okay, spine is stacked upright. So as we hold with the strength of the legs, this grounded quality and through the legs, our right elbow is going to wind under the left elbow. And we'll begin to ease into the upper body. That's where we tend to hold a lot of that anxious energy. So imagine that we're trying to ease some of those muscles in the shoulders and neck especially that tend, to, that tend toward tightness. And if you need to wiggle around, like kind of twisting the elbows around left and right, up and down, that's okay. If you feel like you're off balance at all, just check in back with your feet, ground down. Good. Straighten the legs, turn the toes forward, clasp behind your back, and bow forward. Good. Releasing the hands, take two more breaths, just dropping down. Bending the knees, roll the spine up. Rotate the feet back out to 45 degrees. Before we go into the second side eagle's arms, squat down with the hands pressing the thighs open. And then rotate one shoulder forward. And the other. Okay. Straightening the spine back upward. Feel some strength of the legs going down. Left elbow under right. Ease into those spots that tend toward tightness. Any movements, any directions, any angles that will help. Feet are still solidly with the earth, maybe even sinking lower because of that. One more nice inhale. Good. Exhale, straighten the legs, turn the toes forward. Let's clasp behind and bow. You catch. <laughs> it's so sweet. <laughs> like, like, every time I do this, it's just... Is there a solution Going to head toward a low squat on the right knee, the left leg in a long stretch. So come all the way down as long as your knee's okay. You can play with qualities here. You could come to the floating quality, pressing down to lift up, or you could come to the quality trying to get as much surface area down toward the ground as possible. All of your elbows, all of your thighs. I'm guessing it's a brand thing. So maybe ask somebody that does that brand. So I'm not that common with you. Yeah, maybe it's a, no, it's, no, it's really not. <laughs> yeah, because I'm trying to think of what I would do, and I'm actually not sure. <laughs> what if I walk? Oh, maybe. <laughs> That's a solution. Yeah, yeah try it out. <laughs> try it out. Yeah, see what happens. <laughs> but it didn't do it when I first got it. Yeah. Okay, we're going to go ahead and switch to the second side. So up and over. And then again, floating quality using earth to help you rise, or grounding quality, trying to touch down. Hey, 
From here, we're going to transition towards sitting. So whatever you need to do to gently bring yourself toward the sitting position, legs out in front of you. Go ahead and head toward that shape. Let's take cobbler's pose one more time. And notice how you have to kind of ground down into the sitting bones in order to have the straightening of the spine up. So from that, let's begin to tilt forward and round. Maybe shoulder blades kind of round forward to give some space, that space right in between. It's almost like those astronomy globes that kind of open up right when you want to expose the telescope. Like what's that telescope that's in the heart? And rising up, bring the knees to touch. Let's do that clasp around the shins again, rounding the spine back to that direction. And straightening the spine back up, give a hug around the thighs. We're trying to touch the heart directly to the thighs. And then gradually heel toe feet forward to the point where that hug is about to be lost. So you choose what that appropriate amount is, maybe almost at the beginning, maybe almost flat. Just pay attention to that grounding quality. What does it feel like now to have our feet on the earth, to have our glutes on the earth? or even more surface area, maybe. Well, eventually when you feel ready, we'll begin to release and rise, even making our way down onto the back. Once we're down on our back, this is the last moment to kind of play with gravity and with all that surface area. So maybe you play by doing a few bridge poses, filling your, your back lift off the ground, and then return vertebrae by vertebrae to the earth. Maybe you play with happy baby, plow, a nice twist. There's lots of options here. So take any last movements that your body is intuitively wanting to do. And especially pay attention to that surface area on the earth. Feel everything that has to go down in order for the movement, the twist, the lift to happen. Got zero rush at all, but when you feel ready for Shavasana, let this be a Shavasana of melting into the ground. Maybe imagine you're on a hot beach, and that hot beach, that sand is just kind of hugging around you, giving you nurturing, healing, warming, loving qualities. Every care in the world releasing out of our system with our exhale.
take a nice inhale. Exhale again, let it go. Begin to introduce little movements to the fingers and the toes. Ankles and wrists. Stretching out like we're waking up first thing in the morning. Eventually taking a nice fetal position off to one side. Maybe two or three more good deep breaths until you feel ready to rise. We will arise, we join our hands together in front of the heart. Once again, we feel our surface area that's touching down. Because we're on such a marvelous, large planet, we've got something touching down all the time. So it's, we always, that have that connection to Mother Earth that we can tune into to ground our energy, release our anxiety, release our fear, and bring us back to this present moment where everything really, more or less, is okay. And so, with groundedness to help lead us on, let's allow ourselves to wrap up the time we got to share together today with a sound of Om. Deep inhale now. Om. May we be filled with light, happiness, and peace. Namaste.